The crew of the Sovereign stood motionless on the bridge, enveloped in silence after the signal's unexpected cessation. Only the rhythmic blinking of the console lights pierced the stillness. Marcus frowned. A lifetime of war had honed his tactical instincts, but this strange encounter left him wary. Without any prior indication, the Vox screen abruptly burst into life, illuminating the bridge with the resolute countenance of Governor Elara. Her features projected an air of authority and determination as she addressed the gathered crew of the Sovereign. Elora's image flickered momentarily before stabilizing. She appeared solemn yet composed, exuding an air of quiet dignity. With a slow breath, she began to speak. Warriors of the Imperium, I come before you today not as an enemy, but as a fellow human seeking understanding between our peoples. A voice resonated with clarity and conviction. For too long, we have hidden our civilization from your gaze, cloaking our planet in secrecy and shadows. We did this not out of spite or ill intent, but out of necessity to preserve the sanctity of our world. She paused, her eyes conveying a deep sadness. We have watched your Imperium wage war after brutal war in the name of your Emperor. We have seen the savagery and destruction born of your crusades and we feared that our planet, our culture, would become yet another casualty in your endless conflicts. Marcus listened intently, his stoic expression masking his churning thoughts. Her words echoed his own private misgivings about the Imperium's rigid doctrines. So we hid ourselves, our technology, our very existence, in the hopes that we could remain untouched by war. For thousands of years we have lived in isolation, advancing our society not through weapons, but through knowledge, compassion, and balance with nature. Ilana's voice swelled with passion. We have forged a civilization where technology serves life, not destruction. Our world knows no famine, poverty, or suffering. It is a sanctuary of peace and enlightenment. Our next words resonated with quiet defiance. But we will not see it ravaged or enslaved. If you seek to seize our world as a prize of war, you will find us ready to defend our home with a power you cannot comprehend. Marcus tensed, knowing our words could be construed as a challenge to the Imperial fleet. Yet he also sensed the truth in her convictions. Admiral Verrox, however, did not follow the same train of thought, apparently. His face almost folded in half with anger. As he began to retort, Ilara raised a hand, forestalling his outburst. I wish to bring you here, to this place, to bear witness, she continued, her voice gentle yet unwavering. For only the proof seen with your own eyes could be enough to convince you of the choice you must make. Her piercing gaze turned to Marcus then, questioning and intense. Captain, what do you think would be the best outcome here for all parties involved? Marcus hesitated, considering his response carefully. His brow furrowed as he weighed the complex factors at play. This was no simple matter, with implications far beyond this isolated planet. The birthstone represented knowledge and power, dangerous power in the wrong hands. Yet hearing her... Words he could sympathize that Elara's people deserved self-determination. Perhaps there was a compromise to be found. If we lived apart from evil, and our only fight was for which direction we could expand into, then our lives would be simple and straightforward. There would be no need for complex moral reasoning or difficult decisions that challenge our values. Our path would be clear, focused solely on... Exploration, discovery, and growth. How different the universe would be if we did not have to contend with the sinister forces that seek to destroy and corrupt. If the darkness did not lurk at the edges, threatening to overtake the light. If every civilization we encountered shared our noble goals and aspirations, rather than preying on the weak and spreading chaos. In such a universe, devoid of malice and evil, we could devote all our energy to the pursuit of knowledge and advancement. Our ships could voyage forth without fear, making contact with new species in a spirit of openness and collaboration. 
there will be no need for warships and weapons, just vessels of science and diplomacy. We could expand our reach exponentially, colonizing new worlds and establishing outposts across the stars. Each discovery would be a joyous milestone, not a source of dread and foreboding. How far we could progress and evolve if unfettered by the need for constant vigilance and defense. But that is not the reality we inhabit. Our universe teems with threats that seek to undo all we have built. We cannot escape this fight. It is intrinsic to our existence. The best we can do is remain ever watchful for the darkness and meet it when it stirs with courage and resolve. Though we dream of a different path, we know our purpose lies along the harder road. To hold back the encroaching night for as long as our strength endures, there are no easy choices, but we shall face what comes with faith in our cause and our ability to overcome. For if we falter, the light will be extinguished and evil shall reign unchecked among the stars. With that in mind, I cannot simply leave and abandon this endeavor, since we already seem to be engaged in negotiations and the Admiral has not yet interjected, I will take this opportunity to offer one final chance to reach an amicable resolution. Given that your planet is small, possesses no military force to speak of, and has a meager population at best, it is clear that your world is of little inherent value to the Greater Imperium, beyond providing the basic resource of fighting men, which we require as a non-negotiable necessity, albeit in reasonable numbers. Marcus trailed off momentarily, seeming to choose his next words carefully. Therefore, I propose the following arrangement. We will allow your planet to retain autonomy in name. You may govern yourselves as you see fit, under the banner of the Imperium, but with latitude over internal affairs. Naturally, any rebellion or insurrection against Imperial rule would be unwise in the extreme if you value your lives. In return, we require only one thing, the birthstone. This is not negotiable. I am asking you personally, Governor Ilara, to accept this offer. It is the only peaceful path forward for your people. What say you? he asked quietly. Marcus, with hands clasped behind his back, awaited her response, his steely gaze belying the gravity of the situation. The fate of this small planet hung in the balance, contingent on the governor's choice. He hoped she would recognize his attempt to find common ground, not just between them, but between the Imperium and her people. There were always alternatives to endless war, if one knew where to look. Compromise did not come easily to the defenders of humanity, but for the sake of peace, it was a price Marcus was willing to pay. To his surprise, Elora laughed, a silvery, melodic sound. I agree completely, Captain. The birthstone is merely an inert monument now, as I have been telling you truthfully all along. Marcus stared, dumbfounded. After the impressive display of Eos' defensive power, he had assumed the artifact held deeper significance. Elora's candor left him conflicted and unsure how to proceed. Admiral Verox snarled over the Vox, his anger returning in full force. His weathered face twisted into a vicious scowl, teeth bared in fury. You expect us to believe you now, after hiding such advanced technology from us all this time? Preposterous, he bellowed, slamming an armoured fist on the console before him. Marcus watched the exchange unfold with growing unease. He knew Verrox to be a proud and zealous man, quick to anger and slow to forgive any perceived slight against the Imperium. This revelation from Governor Elara had clearly wounded his pride. Marcus weighed his next words carefully, hoping to defuse the situation before it escalated further. My Lord Admiral, let us not be too hasty, he began raising a placating hand. Governor Alara has been cooperative up to this point. I believe we shall give her the benefit of the doubt and hear her reasons before passing judgment. Verox whirled to face Marcus in the box screen, eyes blazing. Give her the benefit of the doubt? This whelp has been hiding advanced technology that by all rights belongs to the Imperium. Her planet should have been brought to heel long ago. I will not tolerate such insolence, he angrily spat. 
Marcus met the Admiral's tirade with stoic calm. Be that as it may, we came here under a banner of diplomacy. Let us see this through and find a resolution that benefits all, as is the Emperor's will. For a moment it seemed Verex would continue his diatribe, but finally he mastered himself. You may proceed with your questioning, Captain, he bit out, but know that I will be watching closely for any further signs of deception. Marcus's mind churned with questions as he turned back to the box screen, but he knew that lashing out would not reveal the truth. The captain had learned through long experience that the truth was not something to be forced, but gently coaxed with the right keys. If he shaped his questions carefully, people were often eager to unburden their inner truths for him. So he nodded courteously to the admiral and addressed Elora again. Of course, Governor. Now then... Perhaps you could enlighten us as to the nature and purpose of this technology you possess. Marcus began, his tone even, despite the suspicion gnawing within. He clasped his hands behind his back, standing tall and composed before the box screen. I have a question, one that has been invading my thoughts since we last spoke. When I came to you to listen to your decision on joining the Imperium, you mentioned a name, a name of someone who had not yet had their say. Marcus paused, studying Elora's reaction closely. Her genial expression remained unchanged, betraying nothing. He considered his next words carefully. Who is this individual you spoke of? They seem to hold some influence in your world's affairs. I ask only so that I may gain a fuller understanding of your planet's leadership and decision-making process. He resisted the urge to glance back at Verox, knowing the Admiral's impatience would be rising. Marcus needed answers, and he would have them before this encounter was done. Marcus halted, attempting to discern any revealing signs in Elora's features, but once more her face was empty of any response or deception. You mentioned the name Matria. As if a keyword was unlocked in order to progress further, her features suddenly relaxed. Ah, Matria, Elara smiled as she nodded. Very astute of you, Captain. Unmoved by her flattery, he continued on, I would like to press you on who this person is and how they come to have such weight on matters of import, while remaining aloof to those that would wish speak with them. A subtle change in her posture signalled a misstep from Marcus that he wasn't aware of. Ah, maybe not as clever as I suspected, Elora said. I do hope you have taken a seat, Captain, as you might not be pleased with what I am about to tell you. Though I must ask once more that you permit yourself the chance that a fragment of comprehension could have in some way evaded the boundless wisdom of the Imperium. Marcus bristled slightly at Elara's thinly veiled jab, though he maintained his stoic composure. A quick glance to his right confirmed the Admiral was less successful in masking his displeasure, if the deepening purple hue of his face was any indication. All right, guys, there we go. I hope you are enjoying this story. Uh, if you could let me know if I'm doing a decent job with this uh with keeping to the law, I guess, and, and the way the characters were reacting in the Warhammer 40k universe. Just tell me if the story's good. And that's about it. That's all you have to do. Just leave a comment. Um, I'll do the story. I'll create the video. I'll upload it. I'll do all that shit, right? The only thing you have to do is watch it and leave a little comment or a like or something. Actually, I don't know whether you need to do that or whether it's, it's all bullshit, but... Um, I guess it seems to help, so, you know, crack on. <laughs>